Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India continue the discussion of the degree of Zierschan in axial uh, flow compressor and this is what uh, we stopped at that the different velocity triangle uh, for different degrees of reaction. And uh, so, these are uh, one can see how the blade angles that varies for 0 percent degrees of reaction, 50 percent and 100 percent and what could be the uh, blading pattern or the angles that one get for the. So, this is very um, uh, important uh, aspect of uh, when you look at the blade design and talking about the degrees of reaction, because these are very important in the sense this dictate the um, rotor blade design and the loading on rotor blade and uh, things like that. So, Another thing just to note here is that we have assumed reversible work done in the stage. So, work done factor is unity, but due to the presence of irreversibilities, actual degrees of reaction will uh, differ from 0.5. Okay. So, for an axial compressor stage in which the change in density is small. So, this psi would be approximated at P 2 minus P 1 by P naught 3 minus P naught 1. So, which is essentially the static pressure rise in rotor by stagnation pressure rise in whole stage. Okay. So, uh, this could be uh, very easily shown, I mean it uh, one can just uh, do by assuming just like a flow is approximately isentropic in the rotor. So, if you write the T d s equation which is g d h minus d p by rho, so which gets d h equals to d p by rho. Now, since rho is pretty much constant, one can write h 2 minus h 1, 1 by rho p 2 minus p 1 and similarly, h naught 3 minus h 1, 1 by rho p naught 3 minus p naught 1. So, we can get h 2 minus h 1 by h naught h 3 minus h 1, which would be h 2 minus h 1 by 1. So, we write p naught 2 minus p 2 3 minus p naught 1. Okay. So, which is uh, that means, the uh, degrees of reaction can be also estimated. Now, we will move to another uh, theory called the radial equilibrium theory. So, so far the dimensions were in mean radius, we have neglected the variation of the proportion, but our u is omega r and our v z, v theta and p depend on u through alpha. So, all the parameters would be essentially all the parameters will be 
function of r. So, v z is uniform that means, uh, radial at the inlet. So, large variation can develop of some stages. So, v theta would be function of alpha r and p r would be function of v theta r or rather. So, we can check this um, element for the radial equilibrium theory. Okay. So, this is d z, this is d theta. Now, this distance is r, this is v theta that is delta m. So, in a another schematic, if you look at in that uh, viewpoint, so one can write this side is p plus d p by 2, p plus d p, p plus d p by 2, this is p, this is d theta. So, this distance would be r. Okay. So, we <coughs> so we can find out this radial variation radial uh, uh, variation. Now, consider a small fluid element, this is small fluid element of mass delta m with tangential velocity component v theta. Now, the force would be delta m v theta square r. Now, from the force balance, balance of this element which is here, we can write that p plus d p r plus d r d theta d z minus p r d theta d z minus 2 p plus uh, p plus d p by 2 d r d theta by 2 d z which is rho d r into r d theta d z v theta square by r. Okay. So, essentially here the centripetal force is, here we can write del m is rho del v, del v is d r, r d theta and d z. So, forces on the side faces in radial minus uh, axial plane considering the average pressure. So, once we simplify this, we can write P plus uh, d P r plus d r minus P r minus P plus d P by 2 d r rho d r v theta square. So, now further simplification would give P r d p into r plus p d r plus d p d r p r p d r minus d p by 2 rho d r v theta square. So, this cancels out that cancels out this is 0 so, in this goes out and this also. So, what we get r d p equals to rho d p v theta square by r. So,
that is what we get. So, here rho r v theta square by r rho d r v theta square by r. So, what we get r d p rho d p v theta square by r sorry this one would be rho d r. So, then you can write 1 by rho d p by d r equals to v theta square by r. So, that is what your radial equilibrium equation. Okay. So, actual velocity distribution must satisfy this behavior. So, this is important. Now, one can again consider a special case. What it could be is that the any radial direction r, the stagnation enthalpy is given by h naught equals to h plus v square by 2, which is C p t plus half v z square by v theta square. Now, since v r is small than v theta and v z, what we can write C p t equals to gamma by gamma minus 1 p by rho. So, which turns out to be h naught equals to gamma by gamma minus 1 p by rho plus half v z square plus v theta square. So, once we differentiate this one, with respect to r what we will get. So, before we do this another thing which uh, one can write that the change in pressure is one stage is small. So, change in pressure in one stage is small. So, which means the flow can be assumed to be isentropic. So, that is an you can assume that then p by rho to the power gamma is constant. Now, one can write d p by d r c gamma rho gamma minus 1 d rho by d r. So, once you do the simplification, so this will get you d p by d r gamma p by rho d rho by d r. So, that is another part of it. Now, we differentiate this guy with respect to r. So, what we get d h naught by d r v z d v z by d r plus v theta d v theta by d r plus gamma minus 1, 1 by rho d p by d r minus p by rho square rho by gamma p d p by d r. Now, this we write d rho by d r equals to rho by gamma p d p by d r from here. So, if you use that what we will get d h naught by d r is v z d v z by d r plus d v theta by d r plus gamma minus 1 gamma rho d p by d r. So, which boils down to d v z by d r v theta d v theta by d r plus v theta square. So, this is another way one can find out. Now, let us assume apart from the regions near the walls of the annulus the stagnation enthalpy or other internal temperature will be uniform across the annulus. 
to NT2 compressor. So, what that happens? D not dH not by dr would be 0 since flow is axial or rather predominantly axial. So, small variation in radial direction. So, that means constant work input and all radial, hence H naught will progressively increase in axial direction. So, this is V z d V z by d r plus V theta d V theta by d r plus V theta square by 2 which will be 0. So, again special case if V z is maintained constant across the annulus there, then we can write d v z by d r is 0. So, which get us back from here is that d v theta by d r equals to minus v theta by r. So, which means d v theta by v theta equals to minus d r by r. So, that gives our v theta r is constant after integration. So, which means tangential velocity is inversely proportional, so v theta would be inversely proportional to the r. So, condition known as free vortex constant work input all radials, constant Vz all radials, free vortex variation of tangential velocity. So, these are the situation. So, that means constant work input at all radials, constant Vz at all radials free vortex uh, variation of tangential velocity. So, these are all satisfying. So, this satisfies radial equilibrium. Also, this V theta uh, into R constant also satisfies the radial equilibrium. Now, what important is that when we have free vortex design, this requires large blade twist. So, this requires large blade twist in order to maintain V theta into R equals to constant. So, that means high structural stress which may lead to uh, blade failure, large absolute velocity in the rotor exit. So, that could be another issue. So, that means small pressure rise in rotor which means small degrees of reaction, but widely used though in axial turbines. So, free vortex design widely used in axial turbine compared to compressor. Now, with that node, we will move, it, uh, move to the, uh, the different kind of uh, efficiencies that one can define for compressor. So, there are three different kinds which uh, actual and ideal work one can do. One is the stage efficiency which is eta stage which is ideal work done divided by actual work done in a stage. 
So, that one can write H 3 s minus H naught 1 by H naught 3 minus H naught 1. Second, it could be adiabatic efficiency which is eta c again idle work done divided by actual adiabatic work done for whole compressor. Okay. So, this was uh, discussed uh, in already in cycle analysis. So, this differs significantly. So, differs from stage efficiency. Third could be polytropic compressor efficiency, which is eta p c that means, ideal work done divided by actual work done for an infinite simul step in compre sun process. So, this is typically your stage efficiency may be with the polytropic efficiency. So, we can always find out a relationship between eta p c and eta c. So, let us consider um, a T s diagram, this is stage so, goes from here to there, let us say P naught, this would be P naught plus D P naught. Okay. So, that is D T naught. D T naught S. So, there is a incremental pressure rise from P naught to D P naught. So, my eta P C would be D T naught S by D T naught. So, we are trying to find out the um, uh, relation between eta P C and eta C. Now, for uh, isentropic process, what will happen T naught 2 s by T naught 1 is P naught 2 by P naught 1 which is gamma minus. So, T naught 2 s minus T naught 1 by T naught 1 is P naught 2 by P naught 1. So, D T naught s is P naught plus d p p naught by p naught which is minus 1 t naught 1 plus d p p naught by now if we use the binomial expression for d p p naught which is smaller than this on we can write 1 plus d p naught by uh, P naught gamma minus 1 would be 1 plus gamma minus 1 by d P naught by P naught. So, we write d T naught s equals to T naught gamma minus 1 by gamma d P naught by P naught. That means, eta P c d t naught equals to t naught gamma minus 1 by gamma p naught. Now, when the compressor 
between two stagnation stages of 1 and 2, if eta p c and gamma constant, then this t naught 2 by t naught 1 would be p naught 2 by p naught 1 gamma minus 1 by gamma eta p c. So, eta c is minus h naught 2 minus h naught 1, which in terms of temperature that is T naught 2 s by T naught 1 minus 1 by so we get eta c which is P naught 2 by P naught 1 gamma minus 1 by T naught 2 by T naught 1 minus 1. So, that we can write P naught 2 by P naught 1 gamma minus 1 by gamma minus 1 by P naught 2 by P naught 1 which is gamma minus 1 by gamma eta P c minus 1. Now, this is what the relationship between uh, adiabatic efficiency and polytropic efficiency. Now, typically eta c is less than eta p c. So, the difference increases with the increase in p naught 2 by p naught 1. So, with this if there is a increase in pressure ratio the differences also increases. For low pressure ratio eta c is pretty much equal to the polytropic efficiency which would be also same for stage efficiency. So, this is an important conclusion or rather important information that one should keep in mind is that when you have uh, low pressure ratio, then this uh, three different efficiencies which we have got here stage efficiency, adiabatic efficiency or polytropic efficiency they turn out to be same. So, one can look at the textbook like Hill Peterson or any other textbook uh, for uh, this uh, proof for low pressure, but here adiabatic efficiency would be lower than the polytropic uh, efficiency and this uh, typically this is what happens, but this difference between the adiabatic efficiency and polytropic efficiency will increase with the increase in pressure ratio. So, if the pressure ratio actually increases then this difference also increases. So, we will look at the other relationship in the subsequent lecture and we will stop it here.